those will be our groups there. Now we're kind of just going you know, to group them together or display them together. These are all domain local groups. Oops. Should have been domain local groups. Hang on. What? You didn't say anything? Domain local groups. Okay. So we all got domain local groups. Now what we want to do is, you know, add our global security groups to our domain local groups. So in this case, let's grant membership. Let's go hunting for our groups here. And the groups that we trust would be the top agents, global group. And we would also trust research. Trust them. Research and top agents. At this point, not really trainees. Um, here, let's say that we just trust research. We'll have the research global group. And top secret deny, we want to, in case any of, your, any, any of our enemy agents, you know, accidentally steal credentials or get onto the network, we want to make sure that they get denied access. So for members here, we are just wanting to add enemy agents. Okay. So now I've got the A down, the G down, the U down, and the DL down. Now all we have to do is the P part of our AGU DLP, and that's assign permissions to the domain local groups. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here and let's go to my computer and let's go here to top secret first and we're going to pull up properties. We want to edit the DACL. Now if you don't see a security tab, what's going on is you didn't enable that option. You have to go down here and uncheck Use Sharing Wizard, and then that will enable you to see the security tab to edit ACES on the DACL. And another thing I also like to do is I like to you know check this, show hidden files, and uncheck. I like to see my file extensions and system files. So 2008 and Vista will try to hide that from you. You may want to choose to uncheck that and modify that just so you can see everything that you're looking at. Notice you know, all my hidden files are displayed and the file extensions. That helps me. It might be confusing to some, but that helps me as a system administrator you know, diagnose problems or kind of understand what's going on in a system at a glance. So we want to do that. We want to go to Properties and Security tab, and let's modify some entries on the DCL. So I'm going to edit and I want to add my domain local group top secret access and I'm going to give top secret access full control here okay and I'm going to go over to let's go over to secret plans and in secret plans I'm going to go over and I'm going to add Was it secret plans access? Yes, it was. And I'm going to give modify. Let's give modify privileges. Well, I'll go ahead and give full control. Why not? Secret plans access. Um, another thing I'm going to do, though, I'm going to go back to top secret now. And here's where I'm going to use another group. I'm going to use another domain local group. And it's going to be, what did I call it? What did I call this? Top secret deny. I'm going to add top secret deny. Now implicit is when I simply don't allow. So if I implicitly denied you know, members of top secret deny, but they were also a member of say secret plans access, um, you know, in this case they would still be able to access secret plans because their permissions would be cumulative in the most permissive set. But if I clicked on deny, now that's different. That's an explicit denial. And even though they were a member of multiple groups and one or more of those groups had permission on the folder, the explicit denial in this group, if they were a member of it, would override any other permission that would allow them to see that folder so they would actually be denied access. So the difference between implicit versus explicit, implicit is simply not allowing somebody to do something. And that works in the inheritance hierarchy and it's cumulative, whereas explicit overrides everything. And that's where I explicitly check deny. Um, you know, user, I didn't want to do something. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to deny everything here on top secret deny. Uh, 
And then notice, you know, 2008 Wormy there. I'm setting permissions on that entry. I want to add that group here as well. So again, I'm going to edit. And deny. And I'm just, you know, I'm configuring permissions on my domain local groups. And top secret deny. Again, Windows is warning me, hey, that's really strong. You know, you're, you're doing something that overrides the inheritance hierarchy. Not a good idea. Microsoft says try to avoid using deny. Um, as much as possible. I mean, occasionally you have to. But just for the purpose of illustrating this, and also, you know, we just want to make darn sure that if enemy agents somehow secure top secret credentials, maybe they steal Austin Powers' password, that they will not get access to our top secret death ray, and uh, let's not forget the MK Ultra Mind Control Project. Ooh. So let's l take a look at how these permissions work now with different group memberships. Um, Let's go back to Active Directory Users and Computers, and we'll log out and log in as different users and test these permissions. So before we log in and log out and test it, let's just go back here one more time. I want to verify our group membership. So in Northern Hemisphere, I want to look at my domain local groups and top secret deny. In this case, Enemy Agents is a member of that. And here in Enemy Agents, all of our Enemy Agents are a member of this global security group. So that way we can control permission just by this one group here, this domain local group, because added to it is this global group, and all the users are added in turn to that global group. So it simplifies permissions, and it also makes your, your environment run smoother, Active Directory runs smoother, because there are less ACEs to process on DCLs for items when you combine things into groups instead of adding, you know, it's much better than trying to add 100 different individual users and set ACEs on the DCL for each one of those. Um, same thing for research. So if we were to go here and secret plans access, notice that research is there. And if we go to research, all of our scientists are a member of the research global security group. So that, again, this is how we control permissions using AGU DLP. Uh, well, sorry, I meant top secret access. If we go to top secret access, research and top agents. Now, cumulatively, top agents, um, you know, will have permission on this folder, they will not have permission on the secret plans folder, because they weren't added. Just our research scientists do. Um, enemy agents, on the other hand, you know, they're going to be explicitly denied, not just... If, if we implicitly denied that they would not have access to the folder, because we're not going to make them a member of secret plans or, or top secret, but let's just say that, you know, we'll, we'll pretend by accident that somehow one of our enemy agents comes in and impersonates Dr. Evil, because he's really good at this. So Dr. Evil comes in, and he's going to impersonate somebody, and he's going to seek to gain access to research. And we'll go down and add him to the research group. Okay, so now he's a member of three groups. This group would give him permission to access his folders. That would make him a dangerous mole within our organization. But we've, you know, we've thought of that. We've made him a member of enemy agents. Enemy agents will override his cumulative permissions because he's explicitly denied permission to see those folders in this group. And we'll just take a look at, we'll log out, log in as different users. We'll take a look at that and see how that works.